Hello everyone, it's Billy. Welcome back to Billy Holman Creations. I'm out in the shop today and I'm going to be making some antler jewelry holders and I'm going to do these two at a time and starting from scratch pretty much and I'd like to walk you through it and show you some of the steps I take. Anyway, what I have here are some two wooden rounds and I ordered these off of Amazon. They come uh, pre-sanded, but I go over them just a few more times with my little professional uh, hand hand sander here. Um, I believe this is pine, and I know a lot of people would burn on this sort of thing and make beautiful artwork with them. But I've given them a brief sanding, and I've taken off the loose... Uh, pieces of bark that's around the edges because I don't want them falling off of, you know, chipping off the finished product. But I've got those two ready to go and I'm going to move you over to my little workstation and uh, set my camera up so I can uh, show you what I'm going to do next. All right, I'll be right back. Oh, I also had my husband cut me some, uh, oh, one to two inch with rounds of some of our uh, firewood and I have those sanded and ready to go. Um, I'm down to my smaller antlers so the reason I have this piece is I need a lift. I need to raise these high so the antler can drape um, 18 inch necklaces. So now I will set you on my tripod stand. It's not a tripod. It's my stand. I'm going to set you on my stand and we'll take it from there. Just a moment. Okay. I have two antlers, uh, right here. These are deer antlers, actually. Um, white-tailed deer. No, excuse me. Start over. Scratch. Okay. What I have here is two sets of, oh, well, they're not the sets, but two different, um, pieces of antler and these are from uh, mule deer and like I said I'm getting I'm getting my smaller ones because the larger ones are already finished and I'll show you those when I'm done but what I've done so far is uh, I didn't bother cleaning them up or anything but I did sand both bottoms flat because they're going to be propped up on my wood pieces and I like to put a stone uh, inside or some kind of piece of jewelry or glass or uh, like I said stones I like to accent these with a stone and for instance this one it's just a, a brown stone and apparently it's been tumbled but it's very pretty I have no idea what it is and I'm gonna have this set in this antler piece like that so it's rather tedious because I want them to set in nicely. I just don't want to glue them on top because then it's obvious that they're just glued on top. So I do take my power carver uh, right here. This is my M SMC. Yes, my SMC power carver. And with fine tips, I'm able to hollow this out a little bit so they fit nice and uh, flat. The other one... I'm running out of pieces to put in, but this one is just a glass stone. And you'll see why I chose this when we go to accenting the piece when it's almost finished. But I have the blue stone and the brown stone for those uh, antlers. And what I've done now is I went, it's hard to explain, well, this is propped up. You know, the antler, the jewelry pieces are going to be able to hang. So I've, I've chose which uh, part of the antler uh, needs some hooks on it because without the hooks, you know, a necklace would just kind of slide down it. We don't want that. We want some hooks underneath. So I have these little silver hooks that I got from Amazon. doesn't tell me the size, but... I need to place these in the antler itself. So I did some pilot holes with my little power carver here. I did I measured an inch apart and did some pilot holes. Now I'm going to get a drill 
and drill into those marked areas. And let me go ahead and do that. I need to change the bits on my Dremel tool because now I'm going to go to the Dremel tool and get that done. So I'll get set up and do a few holes for you and then we'll keep going. Now I've just put a, a drill bit into my, um, oh my gosh. Okay, I put a drill bit into my Dremel tool and I do have two Dremel tools set up. So this is the drill bit and this one just has a round diamond bit in it. And the reason I'm using this and you'll see me do that is once I drill my hole, you know, just far enough for the screws, to, the little screws to fit in or the hooks. Um, and this is just a bit smaller than the hook, so they'll still be able to be put in and grip well. But uh, the other bit is used to countersink this hole a little bit because the hooks, they have a bit of a, a well, let me show you. They have this little ring right here, this little ring around the edge there. And I want that to set flush into the antler. And with the curve of the antler, sometimes they just won't unless you're able to countersink them in. So that's why I'm using this other bit. So let me do a few for you real quick and I'll show you. And then I will get back to you when we're on to the next step. Okay, let me get started. This will be noisy. I'm gonna take the sound out and here we go. Okay, just like that, I've got the holes drilled on these four here, countersunk, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these two, and I will get back to you. And I also needed to say, I'll show you this tube right here, if you can see it. Oh, it's as far as it comes out. Let me move you over here. This tube right here comes out of my wall, and on the other side is a shop back. So I have a switch here where I can just turn that on and um, it helps suck up the dust. And I do actually wear one of these because you don't need to inhale this fine dust. So I'll be back shortly once I get this part of it done. See you in a minute. Okay, I have all my holes in and they are all countersunk so those little hooks will fit nicely. The next thing I'm going to do is take my power carver and I am going to uh, put my name, Billy Holman and Creations, here at the bottom or the underneath part of this round. There, just like that. You can't see it yet, but it's in there. Eventually we're gonna stain this piece and that will bring um, my name out better. So the next step here is I need to figure out where I'm gonna place this riser and I need to make some drill holes uh, so when I start to put it together, they'll already be there before I stain the piece. So I'm going to grab my um, power drill and my countersinker and I'm going to line up some holes here so I know where it's going to be. I will be right back. Okay, I have all my holes drilled and uh, my bottom, I've got my countersinks here. Um, one of these screws is go going to go through both layers of wood and into the antler. The other one is just going to go up partially into this riser piece so it's good and secure. And I'll also use my um, E6000 when I glue these together. I also put in a pilot hole on the end of each antler here. Uh, so they're ready to be put together once they're stained and once the hooks are in place. So what I like to use on antlers is uh, 
this Minwax Golden Oak. It uh, brings out more of the natural color. And as you can see, uh, this one's been out in the weather. That's why it's whitened. And this one is has not been out so long. But I must say, no animals were hurt in my process of making these stands. Elk and deer drop their antlers annually, naturally, and grow a new set every year. So um, none of these animals have been harmed in any way. These were just natural sheds that were found out in the desert. So I wanted you to know that. And I'm just going to grab an old sock, trying to wad it up in a ball here, and I'm just going to um, stain all three pieces, well, all six pieces, and I'm just, it's going to darken this wood up quite a bit, but it looks so much richer, and we want to see the natural grain of the wood. So I'm going to go around tops, bottom, sides, uh, give you an example of what you know this color will do to this white antler and it just brings out more color and uh, makes them look a lot nicer so I'm going to continue to stain I'm going to set these outside for the rest of the day to dry and then tomorrow uh, we can start assembling these and you'll see how beautiful they turn out so until then have a good night everybody I'll see you later bye Hi, welcome back. Um, let me show the rounds here. They are sanded and stained. And I did put a coat of uh, clear gloss polyurethane on the wood rounds, not the antlers them themselves, just the wood rounds. So they're ready to go. And I'm just putting the last of the hooks into the antlers here. So with my E6000, I'm just taking my little hooks, putting a little glue on there, and screwing them in. And I try to line them up so they're even with each other. It works most of the time, like so. We're going to have them facing out this way. Just a few more to go. And then um, these will be ready to put together. And I'll probably skip that step with you because it usually takes four hands and my husband helps me with that part of it. So um, when I come back, these will be put together and then I embellish. So once I get these hooks in, and then put together, I will get back with you and we will add the final touches. And I think you're gonna like them. Let's see if I can get those somewhat straight. Just a few more. And then, that will give me six of these for the show. Well, actually, I've got eight, I believe, all together. There's two more that I had done some glue previously. And then it's off to trying to make some hair brits because I don't have any hair brits made, and I sold out of those last year. But they're kind of... I'm not excited about them because I have to do some carving, quite a bit of carving on them to get the bread part itself to fit inside. That one's got to go a little tighter. So, like I said, I'm not really anxious to do those, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. That one's tough. Okay, three to go. And then, gosh, sometime next year or maybe this fall, I'm going to have to go looking for some more. 
we find them out in the desert here where the animals, you know, shed them. And that's why you see some darker than the others. Some have been out in the sun longer and they fade. So I, that's why I like to put the, the stain on them. It's not the true color of the antlers, but it's pretty darn close. This one particularly, I don't know. Let me show you. Um, the tips here, the tips have been chewed on. Just a little bit. This one's been chewed on pretty good. Right, where am I? Oh, I need to go under you. Where am I? This one. It's been chewed pretty good because... Uh, Squirrels and rabbits and raccoons, they like to chew on the antlers. I guess they get some form of calcium from them. Okay. And here we go. These are in. Now, real quick, let's set the stone in this one. I'm just going to put a little glue in here. Said I like to embellish. I'm out of turquoise, or else I'd be putting some turquoise in. Bring it down in here. But I'm using what I have. That was my goal this year. Use what you have. Except when it comes to resin, you know, I've been getting a little bit at a time molds and having to get more resin. But this stone should fit and nestle. There, see, it's in. It's in the groove. Whoops, it should slide right in that groove. To where it doesn't look like it's just glued on it actually is set in to the antler and then I'm going to grab a piece of tape until that's secure and just um, wrap it around here make sure that's good and set so there you have it there's one, put that aside, and then we'll go, this is a piece of glass, because the accent on this one has some blues in it, so that's why I went with this blue glass. Set that in, I have to turn it and twist it to see where I cut to fit, right? right there so I'll tape that down and get these put together I'll show you how they are when they're assembled and then we'll put the fin finishing touches on and I'll be done so thanks for joining me have a great day everybody we'll see you in a little bit bye well hello I'm back and these last two are put together uh, let me lift and show you there's my the hangers to the two, the base and the, uh, I call that a riser to make it tall. Underneath it is screwed together in two places. This one goes straight up through the antler and this one is countersunk into the riser itself and they are glued securely and put together. So. What I need to do now, and I'm talking right into the phone, it's probably loud. Um, after I put the decorations on, I'm going to probably go through all of them and put these uh, felt pads on the bottom. So, you know, not to scratch anyone's furniture. But let me show you what I do. I normally find some sort of a bowl. And this one is a clay bowl. 
that I've had around the house forever. I also had a, have, well, you can't see, I have this one here, this blue one, which is going to go on this one, and this little clay bowl here. That's why I put the stone up in this one, the brown stone, thinking that would match. And here is one of the little crystals I did in my uh, jewelry mold. So that I'm going to put up here for a ring. And once they're glued, that's what you have. And I'm going to bring these in the house when they're finished, when the glue has set. And I'll show you one group picture of all the ones, all of the jewelry stands I've done within the last week. So I can uh, just go ahead and put some good old E6000. We can't see him over here. I better get over here. I'm standing up. Just get my E6000 around the edge here. In this way, it's just a little catch-all, you know, for someone to toss something in. I just got it on my hands there. To toss it in a little bowl. And there's room on the stand for a you know, a little candle or a votive or whatever else someone might want to lay down. And I'm just going to set this right here for a little, just a little dish. I'm going to put a little bit of my E6000 inside of this crystal here. See me, I'm all, I'm all out of focus here, and I'm just going to place that right over here for a ring holder. And this, you know, this little piece of horn also acts as a ring holder. And um, I'm going to do the same thing to the one, the blue one here. And when I see you again, I'll be in the house, and I'll show you all of them because they're pretty cool. All right. Be right back with you. Well, here they are. I apologize for the lighting in my home here, but here you can see what I've done. All six are ready. They all have a little ring holder and a little bowl. This one, for instance, has a little bowl I wrapped in jute. There's the one we just glued. Back here, I have uh, just a little sterling dish. And a lady can put anything, or a gentleman could, anything they want. There's the soap dish holder I made, remember that? Yeah, I just decided to go ahead and put it on. But there you have them. That's what I've been doing all week. I hope you like them. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, take good care. Bye.